What is up, guys? I am back in action, and check this out. It's pretty nice. <laughs> Cubase starts right up. Um, you know, if you guys have Cubase, I guess that happens, like, every few updates with Windows. Sometimes it just doesn't recognize your license. But, yeah, either way, let's get this video started. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to assume you've already ordered your Go e drum or your VH11 hi-hat that comes with the controller to upgrade from your stock Alesis hi-hat. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, pretty much when most owners get the Alesis Strike or the Strike Pro, the first thing that they notice is the hi-hat is not exactly as smooth as they would like it. And they look into, you know, aftermarket controllers, whether that's the Go e drum or the VH11 again. Um, but the only drawback when you switch to that is that you have to lose the bottom hi-hat piece because it's integrated with the Alesis hi-hat controller. So it pretty much just becomes the one symbol that works with the controller and no bottom hi-hat symbol. And what that leads to is just, you know, the slightly unnatural action when you have the pedal all the way closed. The hi-hat still uh, moves in like a rocking motion as if it was open. Today, I want to show you how you can reintegrate that bottom symbol into your new controller. And it's one of the coolest DIYs I think I've ever found because, you know, obviously I'm using it on my own hi-hat and it's just so much more fun and natural and really just takes advantage of the better uh, hi-hat controller along with the much more natural feel of having both hi-hat symbols reacting to each other on the stand. So here we go. Let's get started. All right, guys, so this is everything you're going to need for this project. Um, your bottom hi-hat symbol from your Lisa's Strike or Strike Pro. Whatever controller you're changing to, this is the VH11, but the Go eDrum uh, controller will work as well. Um, just a regular pair of scissors, a uh, normal-sized Phillips head screwdriver, and two rubber hoses. Now, I got these from Advanced Auto. Uh, one is 5 8 and the other one is 5 16 and I'll put the exact uh, part number from Advanced Auto in the description below, as well as the dimensions. But you're going to need these two hoses, and you're not going to be spending too much. I think they're both about four bucks, three, four bucks each. So, yeah, definitely not too expensive there. So the first thing you want to do is grab your Lisa Strike hi hat symbol and your Phillips head screwdriver, because we need to take these three screws out, because we're going to be removing this uh, this cord and the electronics inside of this piece here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that really quick. Now you don't want to lose these screws because this piece is going to go right back on top once we take the electronics out. So put that to the side with the screws in it. And you can see there's three more screws inside. So we're going to go ahead and loosen those as well. Alright, so I got my three screws loose. Now the next thing you want to do is locate the three ribbons on either side. And you want to pop these ribbons out of the plastic plugs that they're plugged into. You notice I already have one done here. And an easy trick is if you just pry up on this plastic part, it kind of pops up and um, it'll make it easier to get your screwdriver underneath these ribbons and kind of just pry it out of the, uh, the plug like that. Once you have that out, you can just go ahead and throw that away because we're not going to be using it. All right, next we're going to put this black cover piece back onto the symbol, just making sure that the screws are going in the elevated uh, three threads here. All right, now once you got that done, we're pretty much ready to get this thing installed. So before we move on, if you have the Go e Jump controller, uh, I'm going to put a picture of this up on the screen. You can notice the area uh, that surrounds the sensor piece that goes up and down isn't that wide, so there's not that much contact area. And more importantly, it's a flat surface. So what you might want to do is grab the bottom hi-hat piece and sand just around the edge of the bottom hi-hat piece and you want to flatten that out and all I used to do that was some 100 grit sandpaper and a 2x4 or you can use just any solid flat surface and you just want to wrap the sandpaper around the 2x4 and you just want to set the symbol upside down and you can grind back and forth until this is pretty flat and it shouldn't take that long the 100 grit sandpaper isn't that coarse it is coarse uh, but it only took me a few minutes and then you just want to be able to set it down and have it not rock you know you want it to be able to stay on a flat surface so um, that's just something you might want to do before we put this on the stand all right so now you've got your two hoses and your hi-hat controller and what you want to do is grab your smallest hose the 5 16 and we're just going to cut a very thin strip from that i would say a little bit less than a centimeter 
but it doesn't really matter. You don't have to measure this one. You just want a little piece from this. So that's probably good enough right there. So put that aside. That's all you need from this hose. Now with the thicker hose, I would say uh, cut about a two inch length piece. Um, if that's too small, you know, you have a lot of extra that you can cut a little bit of larger piece, but I would say start with two inches to be safe. Uh, this is about one and three fourths and that works for me. So once you have your pieces cut to size, now you can move the other pieces to the side and we can slide these onto the hi-hat. So if you're using the Go E-Drum controller, you're going to grab that stock spring piece that normally goes in the center and we're going to remove the spring from that base because we're going to use that base to move the controller up and down. So this should just pop right out pretty easy. And then we're gonna cut about two inches from this thinner hose. And you know, again, we can um, trim this down later if we need to, but about two inches should be good to start. Also, you wanna make sure that you're trying to cut as flat as possible um, on the hose. This, this side looked pretty good, but this side over here is kind of on an angle. Um, so I'm gonna to try to trim that down a little bit before I put that on the high hat stand. All right, so we can go ahead and slide this controller on just like you normally would and plug that in. But once that's plugged in, you want to grab both of the hose pieces that we cut and slide them onto the hi-hat with the smallest one first. So you're going to notice the larger one is actually going to be the one that's moving the sensor up and down. And the smaller one is just keeping this so it doesn't wiggle too far back and forth. Now the next thing you want to do is put on your bottom hi-hat. You can just slide that over the hi-hat stand and it'll go right over the hoses just like that. So you're going to want to take note of how long the center hose is that you cut um, because that's going to be what's directly interacting with your hi-hat controller. Um, and that's why you want to cut it a little bit longer at first because you can always cut a little bit off to make it lower. Mainly because when you close the hi-hat, if this is too long, it might not even touch the bottom symbol and that's not good for feel. But the coolest thing about this hose and the DIY is because some of these controllers don't react like exactly when you lift up your pedal like a normal hi-hat would and that's just how they are the VH11 isn't perfect they work a lot better and they're smoother and they react like a lot smoother and they're trouble free and they're very smooth but what the actual reaction time of when you're opening and closing isn't exactly spot on but now you can you can literally designate that so you want to start with this a little bit longer and if it's not reacting to when you're opening the pedal exactly right on you just cut this a little bit shorter put the top hi-hat back on and try it again until it's absolutely perfect. And then you can dial it in, in the module of course. So all that's left is you pull the cord through this hole here, plug in your hi-hat symbol and dial it in. And I just want you to notice how close the top hi-hat is to the bottom. I'm not getting a whole lot of range as far as movement, but on a regular acoustic hi-hat, I can get fully open to the middle to the all fully tight. And that's exactly how this is responding. Notice how it's moving when I'm hitting it really hard and then when it's tight, no movement. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this DIY. It's so simple as you can see and the results are just awesome. I'm loving this DIY. So go ahead and do this guys. If you still have your bottom hi-hat piece, do not throw it away. Make sure that no matter what controller you get, you do this mod and you're gonna get the best of both worlds. You know, smooth triggering, open and closed, and you can adjust it so it reacts exactly to when your pedal's moving. Even in a hi-hat that's so super close and tight like this, that's how I like my hi-hats anyway, and I'm super happy with this mod, so. All right, so that's the video, guys. Hope you liked it. And again, if you aren't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. It helped me out a lot, and I will see you guys next week.